What up guys, this is David with PhD TV, and today we're gonna to talk about cloning. All right, so to get started, we gotta have our supplies. First thing we have are our inoculants, Azos and WP. These are just both water soluble inoculants to help give the plants a little extra boost with their first roots. Our medium, which is what you're gonna actually stick the clone into, and this is Root Riot. It's great right out of the bag, or like we're doing, mixing it with some extra juice. And then the all-time favorite, Clonex Rooting Gel. Kind of the go-to for rooting solutions. Definitely something you wanna use and have keep on hand. And last but not least, our tray and dome. So here we have a three-piece setup. We have the clear dome with adjustable venting lids. So the next piece is we have the tray insert. This one here is six by 12 and it is meant to hold these square root cubes. And then of course, the bottom tray, which is gonna hold any residual nutrient solution in water, just to keep the moisture up throughout the whole time. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna wanna do, put gloves on. When we're working with plants, especially in the tender stage of clones, we always wanna keep everything as sanitized and clean as possible. Any little molds or mildews will keep them from rooting and will definitely not ensure a successful amount of clones. So here we're gonna mix up our inoculant and rooting solution. We're gonna blend in our Azos and Mycos, and then we'll soak the Root Riot cubes. Now what's unique here is these Root Riots are actually pre-moistened right out of the bag. You can stick them right in and get them going. With our method that we'll talk about today, we use a little bit of extra stuff because we won't be touching these for 10 days. For the Azos, we're gonna do one tablespoon per gallon, so it's gonna be five tablespoons in this bucket. And of the Mycos, we're only going to be doing two tablespoons for the whole five gallon bucket. This will be enough to get them going and keep them pushing. Just like any other time you're feeding or applying nutrients, you gotta check the pH. So we know that our water's coming out at seven and so we're gonna have to bring this down just a little bit our ideal range is going to be between 5.5 and 5.8. We know that our tap water is at a 7, so we're going to start with just little capfuls at a time and work our way down. It's going to take much in this bucket. Now that we've got our nutrient solution blended up and pH down, we're going to add in our root rye cubes. Alrighty, so at our next step, we gotta prepare our station before we start cutting clones. So as mentioned before, we've got our Clonex and we put it in a little cup. The reason being, we don't wanna contaminate the whole jar by sticking all our clones into it. Pour out a little bit at a time and work one clone at a time. Next thing is we're gonna have our tray out and we're gonna start filling it with our root cubes. Now, because the root cubes already came pre-moistened, but we soaked them, we have to squeeze a little of the excess water out. A gentle squeeze, and right in the hole. Repeat, and we'll just keep doing this till it's all filled up. And finally, we got them filled up. So now let's get to cutting our mothers. Alrighty, so here we've got a selection of a few different mothers. They've obviously had a lot of clones taken and they're pretty old. I think this one here is all the way back in June. So the nice thing about plants of this size though is you can get a lot of cuts at once and you won't really have to search as far. The important thing though when you're cutting is that you're not just taking the clone and leaving the rest of the plant to be. You need to prune it to give you more clones for the next round. So let's take a look at the difference between doing a big plant and doing a little plant. So when we're diving in on a big plant, the most important thing to do is to look for an even structure and to work our way from the top down. Now contrary to what a lot of people say, they want to get clones from the bottom because they have more rooting hormones so forth, my experience has been that a bigger, healthier, more vibrant leaf and stem is going to grow a lot more aggressively and give you more consistent clones as you can kind of see around you. So when we're taking on this first branch here, you look here and this would be a good clone. However, we're actually going to go ahead and take off this whole branch. So now that we've got this whole branch, we tell we've already started to balance out the structure of the plant. Now we're going to go ahead and get our clones from here. So we've got one, two, three really nice clones we're gonna get. So starting, starting at the top, we want this clone to be roughly six inches long, which in my hand is about right. So we'll cut this at the base. 
Now we're gonna slip off all these little fan loops, leaving maybe an additional one here if these ones aren't big enough. This way they have something that will give them nutrients. Remember, these little guys won't have roots, so they can't suck up nutrients. So the only thing they get to live with is everything they've already got. The last step before we slip it into the cup is to slide it down in the hand, trim off the little tips. This will help it keep from transpiring too much moisture in the dome. And we slip it into our cup. Important note, one cup per plant. You don't want to start mixing up clones because if, you'll, if so, you'll have the wrong strain real fast. So this clone here is a lot bigger and it's beyond the six inches that we need. So looking at where I've cut off previous spots, we're gonna come up and we're gonna go in between. So this way we've got a rooting zone and an obvious rooting zone. We'll remove this other big leaf, slide our way up, trim the tips and into the cup. Working with our third and final of this branch, Now it's important that we get a clean cut and don't leave any pieces behind because those are good rooting spots. Now here, I can't take off this big fan leaf because that would leave not enough fan leaf behind. So we're gonna leave it, slide it up, trim the tips, and into the cup. So now that we've got a few clones cut, we're gonna keep working our way through until the plant has got the right amount of spacing and we've got a full cup of clones. Alrighty, so from before until now, looks like I've butchered this poor mother. But she's actually gonna be a lot happier. With all these new growth sites and toppings, the inner nodes are gonna start pushing out and we'll start having a whole lot more clones on the next round. So there's a big difference from before until now. And you can tell I've cleaned up a lot of the lowers, a whole lot of the top. They've got a lot of nice inner spacing here, so new branches can shoot out and we'll keep getting a lot of good clones off this mother for hopefully another month or so. Now let's see how we treat a youngin. One of the things you'll notice is I'm throwing everything away in this green trash barrel. That's because in the state of Oklahoma, you have to register and weigh all of your waste individually. Per plant, actually, is the requirement. So what we do is we clean up after each time we prune or clean up, and we were gonna weigh our final matter. So starting with the fresh cup, with its own distinct tag on it, we're working with a new plant. Now with a little one like this, we won't get near the amount of clones. Whereas this one, I got well over 50, we may only walk away with 10 clones, but it's gonna end a nice pruning. So check it out. Now the first cut I'm gonna make on here is gonna be a pretty deep aggressive one. This plant has never been topped before. It's straight from seed, so we're gonna come right aggressively down the middle. Now looking at this here, you can see these lower branches that I'm cutting down towards, they are actually not as tall as the side pieces. So we're gonna come down all the way beneath them even to here. Now if, that, if you notice, that's half of the plant. But when I take it out, we didn't lose half the plant. We got some nice cuts. Same as before, we're gonna work our way down, find our appropriate length, clean up the sides, trim the tops, and she's ready to go in the cup. Keep working our way through. One thing to note when you get to the top center one, this stock is gonna be really thick and it's a hard thing to clone. Now you can always cut the clone just as you would any other and shape it up. But I can tell you from experience, most of these big ones are not gonna root. As I mentioned before, we'd only get a few cuts off of this. And after taking out the main center stock, we really just wanna prune it up now. So we're gonna get a nice solid cut off of here and then we're going to clean up the lowers so that we just have a nice set of tops. And then here in about two weeks, this lady will be ready for her first full round of cloning. So as you'll notice, the plant looks a little funny right now, but it's got a lot of regrowing to do. By taking out this main center stalk and cola, it's gonna give the energy back to all these side branches. So by cleaning up the lowers, we're forcing the energy into the top new growth. That's where we want the plant to focus, and that's what's gonna give us this type of structure. Alrighty, now it's time to plug some clones. So we've got our Clonex, and we've got our first batch of clones. 
Quite simply, we're gonna pull out a little branch, snip off the bottom. I'm working one at a time because Clinix is very thick. We don't want too much on there. So as you'll notice, it clings on well. So a quick dip is all it takes. Plugging that in, moving on to the next one. Now when we push this in, we want it to be about a quarter inch from the bottom of the cube. We definitely don't want it touching the base. A good way to judge the distance of how far you're shoving in is to hold your fingers slightly above and when you reach the cube, you know you've gone in deep enough. Something that'll sometimes happen is when you're going to shove them in, the stem is a little bit weaker and it may break. As you notice here, this buckled right when I was shoving it in. All you gotta do, snip right above it, re-dip it, and re-stick it. The clone may be a little shorter, but it'll root just the same. So that we don't get the tray mixed up with any other strains, we're gonna go ahead and put the dome on and call this one done. Now here's the secret to success with these clones. You don't touch them. So we're gonna seal this up, and we're gonna leave it closed, and for 10 days, this is gonna sit under moderate light. So if you have T5 such as these, you're only gonna to wanna to run one or two bulbs, or LEDs under a blue spectrum do just fine. Uh, they don't need intense light, and they don't need it direct on them. So a few feet above will be great. For 10 days, you do not touch them. You do not lift the lid, you do not crack the domes, you don't do anything unless it appears that something is going wrong. And then you can intervene. We'll talk about that later. So we just slid in our new tray of clones, and here will be their home for the next 14 days. So you see here we've got one bulb going. That's all it needs. Just a little light, a little love, and a little juice. Now we're not going to touch this for 10 days while the roots develop, and then we'll check on them. Check this out. So this tray here got planted on 1-7. It has passed its due date, but as you can see, the dome has been opened. So on day 10, the most important part of this process is that we're going to flood the tray and then we're going to drain it out and then open up our domes. This is going to force the little bit of roots that are in there to push off and take off aggressively. Now when we flush the tray, we use the same blend that we used for our inoculants and the cubes, but we also add full strength veg newts, whatever brand you're running. Check these guys out. Roots, on roots, on roots. They just don't stop. Now it's important to pay attention to the date. As you can see, these ones have been here since the fifth and they are way past due. When your roots are like this, you gotta be really careful when you transplant because they're tender and they will break off. Swiveling them into the soil like this is your best way to give a transplant. So all these pretty little ladies were transplanted only four days ago. Take a look at this growth. It's already pushing right out. You've got clear new growth. And I guarantee if we flip this over, there'd be roots pushing almost near the bottom. It's amazing how fast a healthy clone will take off and give you the results you're looking for.